God is great and he is greatly to be praised. And this morning, we come to say, Lord, you are worthy and we give you the praise. Lord, you are awesome and we give you the praise. Lord, you are righteous and we give you the praise. You're always making a way out of no way. And we come to give you the praise. Come on, stand up on your feet and help us make this up. Worthy. 
another day's journey and I'm glad we, we made it through yesterday and God has started us on another journey today is anybody glad in the house is anybody glad in the house that you are on another journey's journey and we are glad we invite you to stand for the call to worship if you can join us in standing for the call to worship and, and, and minister Breon has already set the tone with showing us how to make a joyful noise so we're just going to come right out of the 100th psalm for our call to worship make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands serve the Lord with gladness come before his presence with singing enter into his gates with thanksgiving anybody got some thanksgiving today and into his courts with praise be thankful unto him no matter what's going on be thankful unto him no matter how it looks be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good his mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth for all generations let's pray God you're in the house and we're glad God you were here before we got here and we're glad. God, you created this very day and your purposes will go forth. Your perfect will will go forth. God, help us to call upon your holy name and just settle into your presence. Spirit of the living God, have your way in this place. We need you, God. We see you, God. We hear you, God. We thank you, God for the work that you're doing even now and the plans that will go forth by your hand today. We love you and we bless you for it. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Another way God has made a way and is always making a way is when more souls have arrived in the kingdom. Somebody has had an encounter with Jesus Christ and now is saying, I'm ready to make it public. I'm ready to let everybody know what Jesus Christ has done for me. So I'm going down into the water by faith. At this time, we're going to turn it over to Reverend Powell, who will lead our baptismal service. Amen. 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 What a wonderful privilege it is to be able to have another soul be written in the book of life. Amen. 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 It's a great and wonderful thing to be able to know that the word is still penetrating hearts, that the Holy Spirit is still convicting and touching souls on the day. And don't forget, you are a part of this. You are a part of the mission. The mission that Jesus told us to go ye baptizing them 
in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So again, we thank you for this opportunity, for your tithes and your offering, for allowing us to be able to use that to be able to get the word out to a dying world who is looking for a savior. Amen. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Father, we just thank you once again for this opportunity. We thank you for calling us and choosing us to be able to touch those that you have called to be able to join the fold. We ask that your word continue to be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Allow your word to continue to penetrate this dark world. Allow us to be able to be the light that you have called us to be. That's on top of the hill that the world cannot hide. We again ask that you continue to allow us to be the, be able to be the salt that you have called us to be. And let us not lose our Savior. Again, we thank you for all that you continue to do. We ask that you please bless Latoya in a special way as she continues to make this journey, this first step in this journey of being more like what you have her to be. Allow her to be able to know that you have her in your hands. Calm her, comfort her. Allow her to know that she now has, an, has a church family that's standing behind her and that she can call us anytime and we shall assist her. We again thank you for all that you continue to do. We thank you for passion and everyone that's here. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Take me to the water. be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Amen. That's the conclusion of our baptism, sir. I hand it back over to Reverend Haywood. God bless you. Amen, amen. Turn to somebody and say, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Find somebody else and say, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? We ask that all of the buildings, you all stand up and sing this old school hymn. Are you washed? Amen. Thank <laughs> you. 
the privilege we now have the honor to go boldly before the throne of grace giving him all of our petitions all of our concerns because he is concerned about us and what we're dealing with and that's good news let's pray for those who are on our prayer list and who may not be on our prayer list you may be sitting out there in the congregation welcome to you facebook and youtube and teleconference you too may have some needs at this time and and desire prayer let us touch and agree together dear god you are marvelous in our eyes yes God we're honest enough to admit sometimes we don't always understand clearly what you are doing how you're doing it or why you are doing it but God you said that we are a people who walk by faith and not by sight help us God not to get lost in the sight to the extent that we fail to use our faith. God, we're coming to you today, praying in faith for all of those who have requested prayer on that prayer list. Yeah, the list is long and seems overwhelming, God, but you are greater than any prayer list, God. You are greater than any concern, God. You are greater than cancer, God. You're greater than COVID, God. You're greater than monkeypox, God. You are greater than anything that comes our way. And so we cast our cares on the greater this morning, knowing that it's already worked out. Help us to be a people that walk in the confidence that if you said it, we believe it. And we're going to walk in it and we're going to thank you 
in advance for what you're doing, not because even you're doing it this very second, God, although you are a right now God too, but God, what we want from you is that you do it according to your perfect will, according to your perfect plan. God, sometimes we have agendas and, and we have plans, God, and we get in the way of what you are doing. God, help us to set aside our agendas and our plans and how we think things should be done God so that you can show up and show out in our lives and just show us how amazing you are God because sometimes God when we stay in just our agenda we've put you in the box God and haven't allowed you to operate outside the box we remember that you are the creator of the box you don't need to be in a box to do your work and that's good news God so God we declare deliverance has come we declare healing has come we declare comfort and peace has come and we have declared your long suffering your patience your walking with those with long term illnesses God has already come God and because it's already come it's going to be alright God you say we are to continue to bless your name at all times so God we're not going to be stuck in the circumstances God we're going to lean into your grace God we're going to lean into your work God not to our own understanding God but lean unto you and your wisdom you know what you're doing help us to remember that help us to refrain from questioning too much although you allow us to question God God help us to sometimes say it's okay it's already worked out. You're already doing what you said you would do. You're already acting on your plan. And our goal, God, is to simply say thank you and that the praises will continually be in our mouths. God, we love you. We thank you. We're leaving it all in your hand. We're leaving it all, God, not some of it, not a share of it, not a part of it, God. We're leaving it all in your hands that you might have your way. We bless you and thank you for it now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen.
need to lift your voices and give them glory all over this building. We honor and we bless you, oh God. Hallelujah. Salvation and glory. Honor and power. Why? Because he's wonderful. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah is the highest praise and we give him hallelujah because he is worthy, he's worthy and he is wonderful. Give God a wonderful praise today, hallelujah, hallelujah, thank you Lord, thank you Lord. Certainly we are thankful to be in the house of the Lord and certainly we thank God again for our choir and our musicians and leading us into worship. Amen, amen. We, we thank God again for our associate minister, Reverend Hayward, for leading us. We thank God again for Reverend Powell who led us into baptism. Hey, we just, we're just blessed and highly favored of the Lord. We're just blessed and highly favored of the Lord. And I stand to let you know that the Lord is good. Amen. He's good. He's good. And guess what? He's good like that. Amen. He's good like that. I know we say he's good all the time, but I need to create some new expressions of God. He's good like that. Amen. Anybody know to be good like that? They like that. Amen. 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 Good to be here today and certainly we thank God again for how he has blessed us as we come today uh, we welcome you to the sanctuary for those who are in the sanctuary we welcome those who are in our Facebook and YouTube audience as well as those who are part of our teleconference we welcome you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ it's so good that you are able to tune in with us today amen we are thankful and if you are here in the sanctuary and this is your first time, even I'll take a second time, amen. If you're here today, we want you just to recognize you and being here. If you're here, would you please stand? We want to see if you're, if there's anybody here today for the first time or the second time, we ask that you would please stand. Amen, amen, amen. Well, again, we thank God because we're all acquainted with one another, amen. And so we are so thankful again for your coming today and we're honored by your presence. We have so many things to thank God for. And one of the things we have to thank God for, and I know pastor can get in trouble sometimes, but I know we've been praying for some people. Amen. And they have come back to service. Amen. Amen. Uh, I see, I see uh, Reverend Sheldon Davis over there in the corner with this. Amen, amen, amen. And uh, I, I see uh, Brother Michael Stafford over there in the, in the media center. Amen, amen. And we just, all of those who have been sick and you're back today, we honor you. And we just, again, see that we serve a mighty God. Guess what? Who is a healer? If you believe he's a healer, shout healer. Amen, 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 certainly. We are thankful to be in the house of the Lord. We have another reason to be thankful. And we are thankful because the, the hurricane uh, Ian didn't affect us as bad as it could have been. But we know that it had a great impact on the state of Florida and even in South Carolina, even in North Carolina. And uh, we're going to invite you to, to be a blessing next Sunday. We're going to do a special offering next Sunday, a special offering I think that every time that there is tragedy, there's an opportunity for the church of God to step forward and show some love. And so as you bring your offering next Sunday, we will first of all ask if there's any member that has a family member that has had some storm damage and we're going to take care of those in the family and the things, we, the monies we have left over, we will give to Red Cross. And so just prepare next Sunday to give a special offering to those who have been impacted negatively by the hurricane uh, in. Uh, the, last, the other thing I want to mention is that I want to make sure we are aware of how important this election cycle 
and the voting process is. And uh, amen, amen. It's, it is important for us to exercise our right to vote. I don't, tell, I don't ever tell anybody who to vote for, but please, ma'am, please, sir, make your voice known because you gotta, you gotta vote your interest. Can I get some help in the house? You gotta vote that which is gonna benefit you. And so we're preparing for November 8th, which is gonna be our election day. But we want you to know that we have some uh, registrations. If you haven't registered to vote, we got a registration forms in the lobby. I think they may be even on a table. If they're not in the table, they're in the information. They're in the information center. And please, would you please, if you haven't registered, take that form and fill it out. If you fill it out and uh, leave it with the office, we'll make sure we put a stamp on it. That's what we'll do, because we're so excited about you voting. Can I get an amen? It's important for us to step forward. Amen, amen. So with that, I'm just now ready to uh, pre present some certificates. We are so thankful for those who have come to Oak Grove Baptist Church ready to do work in the kingdom of God. It is good and it is a privilege and we ought to thank God every day that we have people that are joining that will want to join the church of Oak Grove Baptist Church. Come on, give God praise that we have that. <laughs> and the first certificate goes to Latoya. <laughs> Latoya. <laughs> We are so we are so proud of you. We are so thankful for what the Lord is doing. The Lord wants to do something greatly in you, Latoya. Hear what He has to say. But we want to again say we are so thankful that you completed new members class, and today you you completed the certification of baptism. And so here's a certificate for you, and we are so thankful for you, Latoya McMillan. What's her name, y'all? All right, and we also have uh, uh, Felicia Brown Kelly. Is uh, Felicia Brown Kelly here today? Uh, we have uh, Tyrese Kelly. Is to Kelly's here today? We have also today uh, certificates for Faith Arnett. Is Faith Arnett here today? Faith Arnett. We have uh, another uh, uh, certificate for. Marquise Brooks, we're having the Brooks, the Brooks are here today, uh, as well as uh, Sharkina, amen, I don't see nobody moving yet, so let me just keep on going, uh, we also have uh, Amya uh, Brooks, the Brooks are not here today, and let's see if we can get somebody that's here today, I have Sylvia Souls, the Sylvia Souls here today, give God praise for Sylvia Souls, and also Larry, Larry Shows, Souls, Larry, Larry, is Larry here, Larry Souls, and I believe, amen, give God praise. All right, all right, all right. We are so thankful today that we have the Souls family, and uh, we want to thank you all for coming and being a member of Oak Road Baptist Church. And Brother Larry, we just want you to know we're glad that you completed new members class, and this is your certificate that identifies that as well as sister sylvia thank you so much for completing new members class and we are so thankful to have you in our congregation all right god bless you give, give it up for the souls and i've got one more and that's gary hancock is gary hancock here today give god praise for brother gary amen amen all right, Brother Gary, how you doing, my brother? Good to see you, my brother. I'm glad that you have completed new members class. First, you said yes to the Lord. You said yes to Oak Grove, and then you completed new members class. We are so thankful to have you, my brother. I want to present this certificate as your completion of new member. All right, God bless you. Oh, yeah. All right, what's his name, y'all? All right, and don't you forget it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, let's keep work. Uh, let's keep on praising the Lord as we now prepare ourselves for announcements. Let's worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Good morning, Oak Grove family and friends. We're so glad that you've connected with us, the Grove Without Walls, where our pastor is Reverend Dr. Franklin D. Watkins. 
If you are attending, listening, or watching us for the first time, we would like to extend a warm welcome to you. Whether you're watching us on YouTube, Facebook Live, listening on the teleconference line, or attending in person, we would like to thank you for joining us. We appreciate each one of you. We pray that you will have an awesome worship experience with us today. Now it is time for our announcements. Attention ladies, it has been a few years since our last shopping trip and some have been asking when our next trip will take place. In order to make a decision, we need your input. For the entire month of October, we have a very short survey available for those of you who are interested in a 2023 women's shopping trip. You will find cards and a box to place them in on both tables in the church foyer. Only complete the survey card if you are interested. We will announce the decision in November. Please mark your calendars for the upcoming events. The Marriage Enrichment Ministries Casual Dinner and Game Night was postponed due to inclement weather. Registered guests were sent an email requesting confirmation of their attendance on the new date. Please respond to that email. If you're interested in attending and did not register, please call the church office to see if a space has become available. The new date is this Friday, October 7th from 7 to 10 p.m. This is a friendly reminder that next Sunday is 12 Tribe Sunday. The Unity Choir will rehearse on Thursday, October 6th at 7 p.m. Men's Bible study will be held tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. in person and via teleconference. Deacon Hilton Orr will be the facilitator. The topic is our heavenly dwelling. Scripture reference 2 Corinthians 5 verses 1 through 10, page 130. The next Christian education session will be on Wednesday, October 5th at 7 p.m. We look forward to you joining us in person, virtually, or on the teleconference line. The Ushers Ministry will meet on Saturday, October 8th at 10 a.m. The Greeters Ministry is asked to join us at 11 a.m. The Veterans Ministry is asking for photos of our veterans. If you are new to Oak Grove and you are a veteran, please send a photo via email or text to Candace Earl at blessed12.ce at gmail.com or 704-305-3416. We are preparing for our annual harvest, Thanksgiving Food Drive. The collection will begin next Sunday, October 9th, and will continue through Sunday, November 13th. The donation information will be in the upcoming newsletter. Please pay attention to the preferred items list. These donations will go to families in need and we are looking forward to being a blessing to them. There will be a corporate church meeting on Saturday, October 15th at 10 a.m. This is a friendly reminder that election time is approaching, and if you are not registered to vote, it's important that you exercise your right to vote. Check your local county websites for voting registration information. Your vote does matter. This ends the announcements. Have a safe, productive, and blessed week.
I never know if something behind there. So I have to wait. <laughs> Good morning, Oak Grove. How are you today? It's a blessing to see you. I have a couple uh, cards, thank you cards, as we prepare for our tithes and offering. That gives you time to fill out your envelopes while I read this. How fortunate to have special friends for comfort and support during difficult times of loss and grief. We appreciate your expression of kindness. During this time of grief and loss, we have been blessed to receive such outpouring of support, comfort, and uplifting words from so many. Your care and concerns are appreciated and you will always be remembered. We treasure you among the many who have helped form a rainbow in our cloud. Thank you, each of you for the calls, cards, and any special way my family was recognized during the loss of my brother. This is coming from Deborah White and the Rudisil family. <laughs> to our Oak Grove family, we cannot express our heartfelt thanks enough or, or how grateful we are for each of you. We thank you for the visits, calls, cards, texts, monetary gifts, and most of all, your prayers. We appreciate the dedicated hearts of our church family. When we were hungry, you fed us, and when we were thirsty, you gave us drinks. You all have a quality that's rare in today's society, and it hasn't gone unnoticed. Your unselfish acts are meaningful and important to us. We are seeing the hand of God at work, especially since the doctors were talking like it was, it was the last mile. Thank God Jehovah has the final say. Yes, Oak Grove reveals the true foundation of this church is prayer, kindness, and love. May the grace of the Lord be with all of you and continue to keep us in your prayers. Brother Harold and Minister Pasty McGill. Thank you. Your kindness is a blessing and so are you. Thank you so much for thinking of us as we begin the healing from the loss of our mother. Your prayers and thoughts mean more to us than you will ever know. May God continue to bless you as you continue to minister to the families of those who have transitioned from earthly journey into God's presence. Terry and Pamela Tate. If you can stand with your offerings in your hand, let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we come this morning thanking you for another day. Thanking you, Lord, for just keeping us in your care. Father, as we prepare to bless the kingdom of God this morning, Father, we pray that all of these gifts that will be used to upbuild your kingdom here on earth, that we may do the work that you have called us to do. Father, we love you. We ask that you bless those that are bringing gifts and those who wish they had it to give. Because, Father, we know one thing. You are faithful in all you do. So, Father, keep us in your care. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you will all face the center aisle, and we will dismiss in sections. We will start with section one and section three and follow the directions of the usher, please.
to be here today. So as most of you know, October is a National Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and pink is the official color for breast cancer. So you'll see the men on the choir today with our accents of pink. It's just our way of showing our sisters and our Oak Grove queens that we support you and stand with you. So today's scripture will be coming from uh, Matthew 14, verses 15 through 20. If you'd like to stand, feel free to do so. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And I'll give everyone a chance to find it. Again, that's Matthew 14, verses 15 through 20 in the New King James Version. And it reads, When it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, This is a desert deserted place, and the hour is already late. Send the multitudes away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves food. But Jesus said to them, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. And they said to him, we only have five loaves and, and two fish. He said, bring them here to me. Then he commanded the multitudes to sit on the grass and he took the five loaves and the two fish and looking up into heaven, he blessed and broke and gave the loaves to the disciple and the disciple gave to the multitudes. So they all ate and were filled and they took up the 12 baskets full of the fragments that remained. God's words for God's people. Good morning, Old Grove. Good morning to those here in the sanctuary, those that are watching on YouTube, Facebook, and those on teleconference. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all the many blessings that you have bestowed and will bestow upon us. Father, we ask that you bless Pastor as he brings the word today. We ask that you allow and speak to him, dear Lord. Speak through him. Let people see none of him but all of you. We ask that you allow the word that you sent through him to fall onto good soil within us, and let us take that word and carry it outside the walls of this church to all that we encounter. Father, bless us and keep us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
thankful for being able to celebrate that's what we're doing y'all celebrate life celebrate the life giver and that's God our father which art in heaven and we are thankful that we can come and celebrate on this Sunday this first Sunday in October and it's good to see all my brothers and sisters again what a what a thoughtful idea for the men to wear pink Amen. That was beautiful. Give God praise again for that. Celebrating and supporting our women. Amen. We're thankful for our ushers. Give God praise for our ushers and our media team, our media team, our greeters, our security. Uh, we are thankful for all of those who come together to make Oak Grove to be the Oak Grove that God would have it to be. And certainly it's just good to be in the house of the Lord. And even though it may be cloudy outside, you know what? That's outside. Inside, his sun is shining. Sun, amen. That's and by the way, that's the S O N that's shining today. And we're thankful for the sunshine that God gives us in the Word. And this Word today is, I believe, full of sunshine. It's found in Revelation uh, chapter three and verse number fourteen. That's Revelation chapter 3 and verse number 14 and uh, if you when you get there if you uh, would like to stand you know you're perfectly okay revelations revelation i'm sorry revelation 3 chapter 4 uh, chapter 3 verse 14 for those that are in um, teleconference give you an opportunity to get revelation chapter 3 verse number 14 and this is the reading of this great uh, epistle of Revelation. It says, and to the angel of the church of Laodicean, right? These things says the almighty, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish I wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say, I'm rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched miserable, poor, blind, and naked. But I counsel you to buy from me, that's Jesus speaking, gold refined in the fire, 
that you may be rich, in white garments that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and if anyone hears my voice and open the door, I will come in and dine with him and he will be with me. To him who overcometh, I will grant to sit with me on my throne. And I also overcame and sat down with my father on the throne. Final verse, he who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the Lord. Today, our we're going to put a tag on this message. Who? The Holy Spirit handwriting is on the wall. And this is the question that the handwriting asks. Do you make Jesus sick? Do you make Jesus sick? Would you, you may, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. You, you bow your heads with me, God. We are so thankful for your grace and your mercy and your love and we thank you, God, that you're an awesome God, that you reign and you super rule in our lives. You are great. And God, we always know that when the word comes, it allows us to look in the mirror and to evaluate ourselves. Now, we pray, Heavenly Father, you will help us to see what you see, that we might be able to make the changes we need to make. Now, hide this preacher behind your cross. Let your people see you, God. You be glorified. You be magnified. We love you in the, from the bottom of our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Let all the saints of God say amen. amen. Today's message is the last of a series of messages that I have been preaching. And I hope you've been paying attention because we've been talking about God's handwriting is on the wall. You remember we said that God's handwriting on the wall. Daniel talked to King Belshazzar. And said that the Lord has put you on his scale and he has weighed you and you have come up wanting. Last, and then I think the last time I preached, I talked about how Jesus' handwriting is on the wall. Because what Jesus did with his disciples, he shared with them his true purpose. And he shared with them that everything that the Old Testament spoke about uh, in, in, in terms of the word would be fulfilled in his lifetime. But the disciples could not understand and they did not understand Jesus' purpose. And so we cried out when we had the last message, Lord, open up our eyes that we might see what it is that you're doing in our lives. Well, since God is a triune God, he is a God of the God, the Father, he's God, the Son, and he's God, the Holy Spirit. It's only fitting for me to close out this message by talking about the Holy Spirit's handwriting that is on the wall. And this Holy Spirit handwriting is on the wall in the text. And perhaps this Holy Spirit's handwriting is the most straightforward message that we could receive. It is probably the most direct. It is the most pointed message. It is the most in your face message. Because I believe the messenger is asking us this question. Do you make Jesus sick? Not you, but it's your actions, your your behavior, your, your thinking, your, your lifestyle. Do you, in the things you do, make Jesus sick? Preacher, what is this you coming on this Sunday? Don't you know we came up here to hear a good word? We came, we, we, we're dressed, and our Sunday go to meeting. You come up here talking about you make Jesus sick. What is wrong with you? Well, I ain't saying that, but that's what the word says. Because the word said, if you have a hear, the Spirit of the Lord said, if you have an ear, what, hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say. And Jesus already said, he said, he said, so then because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I will vomit you out of my mouth. And I thought about this because there was a time when Karen and I, we visited Las Vegas uh, with a, two other couples and uh, we had a really great time in Las Vegas. Yeah, the preacher can have a good time in Las Vegas too. And we went to all these buffets, but the last buffet before we uh, left to come back to Charlotte, uh, we all went to this buffet and I know we, we all ate ice cream. And by the time I got back home in my bed, my stomach started turning. 
but I had to get on the plane. So I got on a plane. I was miserable, and I finally made it to Charlotte, and I was just praying, God, if you could just help me make it to my house. And so I made it to my house. When I got to the house, I couldn't even make it upstairs. I had to lay right there on the couch. And there I lay for about three days. And let me tell you what, I was only interested in one place. That was the bathroom. I, can't, I don't need to express it anymore. So that was only two things I wanted to do. Well, praise God. I was sick. And perhaps what this word is trying to tell us today is that we can actually make Jesus Sick. We can actually do things that will cause Jesus to, uh, to, to, to throw up or to vomit. And I believe that's what we can learn in this text today because these Laodicean believers, uh, they did some things that caused Jesus to be sick. But before I get into the text, let me give you a little background. Laodicea was a, uh, was a, a, a chief city of Phrygia. It was an ex ex extremely wealthy and prosperous city. It was located in three of the main highways of that day. And this city had enormous wealth and most of the citizens of Laodicea were well off. They, uh, this city was known by three claims of fame. They were a financial and banking institution. Amen, praise God. I think I'm talking about Charlotte already. And they were, they had a clothing manufacturing center that was uh, well known. And they had a medical school that focused on ISAV, and which is interesting because that's what the writer wrote about uh, in this text. But I believe the Laodiceans would tell us that there are things that we can do that can actually make Jesus sick. What can we do? We can make Jesus sick when we refuse to recognize who he really is. Oh, look at verse number 14. It says, and to the angel of the church of Laodicea and write, these things says the almighty, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. In other words, what he's trying to tell us is that I believe I'm, one of the things I like about Revelation is that when you read Revelation in first verses in chapter one, chapter two and chapter three, where it talks about the different churches, uh, Jesus represent, re represents himself in many ways. In Revelation 1.11, he says, I am Alpha and Omega. In Revelation 2.8, he says, I am the first and the last. In Revelation 2.12, he says, I have a sharp sword with two, two edges out of my mouth. With Revelation 2.18, he says, and I have eyes like a flame of fire and feet like brass. But when he comes into uh, this text that we're in, when he talks about Laodicea, he said, this is Jesus, and he is the amen, the faithful, and the true. Now, y'all need to go ahead and, and again, thank God, because when you think about Jesus, what he really is, he is the amen. It, it, he don't just say amen, but he is the amen. It, he, he's different than Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and all of them, because none of them was expressed as the amen. He's the amen, and I'm thinking, I'm thanking God because when you think about it, God is a spirit. Can I get an amen? And we cannot see God, but we can see the manifestation of God in Jesus Christ. We cannot touch him, we cannot feel him, but we can feel the presence of Jesus in the text and when we look at Jesus Christ. And so Jesus is our guarantee that God is faithful. Can y'all hear what I'm saying? He's our guarantee. He is our guarantee that the word of God will do what it said it's going to do. Well, see, the reason I can get excited about that because now how I know, so how can we be sure that God is a healer? Look at Jesus. Oh, well, let me give you some examples. You remember the lady who had the issue of blood? She said she had the issue of blood 12 long years. She said, if I can just get myself together and reach out and touch the hem of his garment. He says, I shall be made whole. And when he, when she touched him, guess what? The blood stopped. Because why? Jesus is the healer. Somebody go ahead and give God praise because that's what he's trying to tell us. And he is the amen, the faithful and true. Well, maybe you need some more evidence. I want you to know that God is also a deliverer. How do we know God is a deliverer? Well, look at Jesus. Do you remember the time when uh, the, the, the disciples were in the boat and they were, came into a big major storm and they looked for Jesus? Jesus was sleeping on the storm. That's another message right there. He slept in, during the storm. I don't know about you, but anybody got some sleep on what night was that when they came, when the uh, hurricane came through here? Amen. And they woke up and said, Jesus, don't you care if we perish? 
Jesus woke up and said, peace be still. And guess what? He delivered them from that storm. Somebody say, I'm glad to know that the God that I serve is a true deliverer. Well, I see this is a hard crowd. I need y'all need some more evidence. So I came to tell somebody that God is truly a provider. Well, Jesus, how do we know that we that God is a provider? Look at Jesus again. When it was evening and the disciples uh, and, the, and the crowd was in a desert place. And it says it was time then was getting late and the people were getting hungry. And Jesus made a suggestion to the disciples and said, you feed them. And the disciple began to have a meltdown. Wait a minute, Jesus, we ain't got that much money. We don't know where to go. But Jesus said, no, listen, just find something that you can feed them. They found a lad that they had two, what, croakers and what? I'm just trying to get y'all to wake up in here. Try and say. And uh, he said when he sat down, he said he fed uh, 5,000 and he didn't, even, he didn't even count the other people, the women and the children. And at the end, guess what? He had 12 baskets left over. I came to tell somebody that he is a provider. So if he can do that, guess what? He can make a way out of no way for you. So what is too hard for God? Nothing is too hard for God. All he's waiting on is for you to walk by faith and not by sight. And don't, don't deny him and don't doubt him, but just believe in him. So what am I trying to say here? Well, we can make Jesus sick. Uh, how can we make Jesus sick? We can make Jesus sick by having a complacent and an indifferent or a don't care attitude towards him. Look at this verse. It says, verse 15, I know your works that you neither caught hot nor cold. I wish that you were cold or hot. So because of your being lukewarm, he said, neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you, spew you, is what the King James says, out of my mouth. So Jesus is saying that the problem here is with the Laodiceans is that they don't care. You know, it, it's, it's, you know it's, it's amazing that we're living in a time now where people really don't care whether they go to church or not. I wish I had some real help in the house. We are in a place where we are indifferent. We are complacent. We are, don't, we have a don't care attitude. And can I tell you right now, maybe the reason that we don't have a don't care attitude because we are half committed. We are half this and half that. We are, we are half committed and uh, we are half hearted people. I can't get no help in the house, but that's okay. This is when I talk to the lights and the walls. Amen. I got it already planned out. And I wonder, is there somebody here in the sanctuary today can say, preacher, you talking about me because I'm a half-hearted worshiper. I come to church when I feel like it. I'm a half-hearted and half-committed worshiper. Uh, and because I live for God only when I feel like it. I pray only when I feel like it. I come to my rehearsals and my usher meetings only when I feel like it. I give an offering only when I feel like it. I ain't sure enough going to be going down there to the men's to the men's shelter. I'm too good for that. I wish I had somebody in the house here to know what I'm talking about. But what if God says, you know what? Today I'm going to be half-hearted to you. I'm I'm not going to wake you up today. How about that? I'm not going to give you sunshine. I'm not going to give you rain. I'm not going to give you air. What? You would be we would all be messed up, but I came to tell somebody, you better be careful that you are not uh, half-hearted and you're putting all of your efforts out in the world and you're not doing the things that God would have you to do right here at this place in Oak Grove Baptist Church. And Jesus says also to these Laodicean believers, the reason they were lukewarm, he said they were, he, he, he defined it as complacent and lethargic. Complacent means to be satisfied with the way things are. And so not only do we, uh, can we also uh, make Jesus happy by receiving the word and repenting, but we can also make Jesus happy by opening the doors of our hearts. Somebody say, open the doors of your heart. Because he says, I stand at the door and knock. And if I, uh, if anybody will hear me and open up their heart, he says, I will come and sup with them and they with him. In other words, what God is doing, he's opening. He want to open the doors of your heart here today. Anybody would let you let the Lord open the doors of your heart. See, I think sometimes if we would really understand who's really knocking. See, we, we got sometimes we got used to so many different voices knocking on us that we can't even hear when God is knocking. But you got to understand when God is knocking, he's just not anybody knocking, but the God I serve is El Shaddai. El Shaddai is knocking on your door. 
Do you know El El Yon, the, the, the most high God, El El Yon is knocking on your door. Did you know that El El Roy, the, the God who sees, is knocking on your door? Somebody ought to open the door because Jehovah Jireh, I can't get no help in the house here today, is knocking on your door and you don't even know it. You're still talking about, I don't know how I'm going to make things work. He said, no, I'm knocking on your door. Do you know Jehovah Shalom is knocking on your door and you're trying to find out how am I going to ever have peace in this situation and he's trying to knock and get in. Do you know Jehovah Rapha, I can't get no help here, is knocking on your door and you start complaining, well, I can't seem to get comfortable. No, if you answer the door, the Lord will come in. Somebody say, open the door and let the Lord in. If you open the door and let the Lord in, praise God, it's moving now. Then what you'll discover is that, you know, we can make God, we can make Jesus happy. And what I love about it, when you make Jesus happy, it's all good. Because when you make Jesus happy, guess what? He's going to make you happy. As a matter of fact, I came to tell somebody that I'm glad to know when I make Jesus happy, the reason I'm glad is Jesus is going to reward me. And let me tell you what, he's going to reward me with an overcomer's award. He said, well, let, let, me, let, me, let me help somebody. I know there have probably been some people at the church. You know, I know Latoya got a certificate today. She got an award today. And I know I probably got some members that say, Preacher, I've been here 30 years and I ain't never got no reward. No, no award. I know y'all ain't ever going to tell me that. But I, 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 you know, I understand where you're coming from. But here's what I'm trying to tell you. If man don't give you no award, if man, if man don't ever give you no recognition, don't worry about it. Because that's not the, the place you want to be. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that I'm in the Overcomers Award. God has an award for me. And because he has an award for me, he says this way, I got a seat for you at the table. And so if you don't ever invite me to your house to have dinner. No, I don't need y'all to, no, I'm not saying that please do that now. Come on now. But if you don't ever invite me, that's all right because I understand that I have and I'm an overcomer and I have an overcomer's award and I got a seat at the table. All I'm trying to tell you is that I'm big stuff because Jesus made me that way. And yeah, my head, yeah, I'm so glad to know I'm an overcomer. So come on, whatever comes my way, I came to tell somebody that I'm already an overcomer. I don't have to wait until I get good news. I know right now I'm an overcomer. I don't wait, have to wait until I get the doctor's report because I know right now that I am an overcomer. I don't have to wait until they tell me that I don't have to pay my bill at the, at the utility company because right now I know that I am an overcomer. Well, preacher, how can you be sure that you are an overcomer? Well, because I read 1 John 5, 4. For whosoever is born of God overcomes the world. Can I tell somebody right now, you ought to wake up in the morning. You ought to look in the mirror and say, I'm looking at an overcomer. <laughs> I'm so glad that I don't need nobody to tell me that I'm an overcomer because God has already told me that I'm an overcomer. Who is he that overcometh the world? Here it is right here. He that believes in Jesus, the Son of God. Uh, do you believe in Jesus? Uh, I came to tell you that you are an overcomer. Uh, and because you are an overcomer, uh, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Uh, because you are an overcomer. Uh, and he says, I can do all things through Christ uh, to him that strengthened me. Uh, because you are an overcomer. Overcomer, uh, I came to tell you, I'm more uh, than a conqueror. Uh, I'm more uh, than a conqueror. Uh, and so I'm going to believe my overcomer status. Uh, and so when things come my way, uh, I'm just going to turn it around and say, I am an overcomer. Uh, I need somebody to go ahead and declare right now. Uh, I can't say it for you. You got to say it for yourself. Uh, I declare uh, that I am uh, an overcomer. 
come uh, I can't hear nobody yet uh, I declare uh, that I am uh, an overcomer uh, I take things that don't look good uh, and I change them to my benefit uh, and I'm so glad uh, God called me uh, to be an overcomer uh, I'm an overcomer uh, somebody say praise the Lord uh, I will overcome hate uh, with love uh, I can overcome death uh, with life uh, I can overcome sorrow uh, with joy I overcome failure with success uh, I overcome confusion with peace uh, I overcome loss uh, with victory I overcome lack uh, with the abundance I overcome weakness uh, with strength uh, I come overcome the world uh, with the word uh, I'm a bad mama jamma uh, I'm a bad boy uh, because I No matter what it looks like, no matter what the situation says, no matter what they say at home, no matter what your spouse says, no matter what your situation says, listen, it's what the word says. And I will believe the word anytime over the word. Give God praise today. there's someone here today and maybe you're feeling like you don't feel like that overcomer you actually feel like you've been stepped on feeling like people are taking advantage of you I want you to know today that feeling is one thing but truth is another thing and here's the truth why don't you step into the kingdom of God today how do I do that? Well, I started off with knowing that Jesus is knocking at my door. He says, if you would open the door, I will come in. So he's inviting us to have a relationship with him. It's good to have a relationship with your spouse. It's good to have a relationship with your deacon. It's good to have a relationship with your pastor. But the most important relationship you will ever have in this world is with Jesus let him come in your heart today and when you open up your heart to Jesus you understand the Heavenly Father and what his purposes are you live with the Holy Spirit in you so we invite you to become to come today the doors of the church are open please stand all over the building the doors of the church are open and we're inviting you to please come just as you are we're going to make Jesus happy. Make Jesus happy today. If you are in Facebook or YouTube and you need to be uh, make Jesus happy, we invite you right now to send us a message. And we will be looking at those messages. And we will get back to you. I wish somebody would go ahead and make that decision today to come to Jesus just as you are. Well, maybe you're looking for a church home. Maybe you said, I've already accepted Jesus. I've already been baptized. But you're looking for a church. Give God praise in the house. Give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, ma'am. God bless you, my sister. I want to have you sit right here. Sit right over here. God bless you. God bless you. Is there someone else? Is there someone else who's, who wants to make Oak Grove Baptist Church your home church? Uh, maybe you want to make it your home church while you are away from your original church that's called Watch Care. It doesn't really matter how you come. It's just that you will come. Would you please come now and say yes to the Lord. The doors of the church are open right now. And as you are standing, we're going to make this sanctuary a place of the altar, an altar uh, call. And we are going to now, I'm going to ask if, um, if, uh, Reverend Sheldon, you, you can, you, will you please come on over there? Reverend, uh, Reverend Sheldon is going to come over and he's going to, he's going to pray for us. We're going to believe that God is going to do a great thing right here in this church right now. Somebody say right now. Let us now turn it over to Reverend Sheldon. Father God, in the name of Jesus, as we come to you this afternoon, first of all, we want to thank you and praise you for allowing us to be here to worship you on today. 
Oh God, we ask and pray that you touch every heart that is here on today. Bless every mind, bless every soul, bless every spirit. Lead and guide us in the way that we should go, oh God. Oh Lord, we haven't dotted every I, crossed every T. But we know that you are a Savior who forgives and you heals. And we just thank you for all that you're doing and all that you're going to do. Lead us and guide us in the way that we have to go, oh God. Just bless us in a mighty, mighty way. And oh Lord, most of all, forgive us for our sins and wrongdoings. Anything that we've done that was contrary to you, we ask and pray that you would repent. Forgive us of it right now. Cleanse our hearts. Cleanse our minds and put us in the right spirit with you. Father, we love you. We honor you. We praise you. In Jesus' name. And all God's children said, amen. 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 We give with your thanks again to the Lord. Again, thank you, uh, Reverend Davis, for that prayer. And we're so excited that we've given the message and the, the word hasn't gone out for it, but it has returned with produce. And we're thankful for this uh this member who has come let us uh introduce her now pastor we have phyllis hancock she's coming by christian experience yeah, yeah. uh sister phyllis can you please stand you're coming you know what i kept saying i know i know her because she, she looks like a mama that's what she looks like uh, sister, uh, Sister Hancock, you're coming today because you have already been baptized and you want Oak Grove Baptist Church to be your home church. Let us greet by saying amen. Amen. God bless you. We're so glad to have you and we'll get with you in new members class. God bless you. you. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Give God praise. Amen. He just keeps on working, working things out. Amen. We are so thankful for all that the Lord has done. And so we do now want to uh, move into our time of communion. And we're going to ask if you uh, are here today and you did not get a cup. Uh, we want to make sure you get a cup for our communion as we prepare to commune on this first Sunday. Just raise your hand. If you didn't get a cup today, just raise your hand. We want to make sure we get one to you as we prepare for our communion. And as we're distributing the communion we are so thankful that the Lord has given us another opportunity today to say Lord I'm so glad I belong to you here's a hand right here and I'm so glad that you made me an overcomer I'm so glad Lord that you shed your blood for me yeah Jesus hung on the cross just for you and Jesus died on the cross just for you precious blood of Jesus came streaming down and now we have remission of sin I see some hands in the back I see some hands in the back amen I'm going to read as they continue to distribute this, the communion. It says, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to them and said, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it. But this is the blood of the New Testament, which is shared for many for the remission of sin. I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of the fruit of the vine until I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sang a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Would you bow your heads with me now for a word of prayer? God, we are so thankful that we can celebrate your goodness on this first Sunday in October. God, we thank you that we are not all that we should be. We, we have not crossed all the T's or dotted all the I's. But we are so thankful that we can come to your table today and ask that you will forgive us of our sins. God, we know that we have sinned knowingly and unknowingly. But we also thank you, God, that you have already made us worthy because of Jesus Christ and our acceptance of his lifestyle. Now, God, bless us as we partake this communion today. Let it be strength to our hearts and our souls. Let it be the assurance that the Lord God is with us. Let us walk boldly now because of the fact that we know that there's power in the blood of the Lamb. We thank you now. We bless you now. In Jesus' name we pray that all the saints of God say amen.
And this communion is for only those who have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior and King. Now let us prepare for communion. Jesus said, this is my body which is given for you. Now take this and eat this and remember that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Let us eat it together. Jesus said, this cup is a new covenant of my blood, which is shed for you. Now drink this in remembrance that Christ died for you and be thankful. Let us drink it together. Amen. But as Deacon Haynes, would you please come and lead us in a closing word of prayer for the communion? We thank you for this sacred moment. Lord, we pray that you will bless your people as we have taken the, the Lord's Supper. Lord, we just give you praise and honor and glory for it right now. We just give you thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Man. Now let us all stand again. We thank you for coming to Oak Grove. Thank you again for being here on this first Sunday. Let this be a special time of your communing with the Lord. And now when we leave this place, we know we will never ever leave his presence. Let us now have a final word of prayer and a benediction. Let us pray. Oh Lord, our God, we thank you again for your word. We thank you for Revelation 3. God, now help us to never be lukewarm on you. Help us, Lord, to never be hot or cold. We want to be hot every time. We want to be, we want to be committed to you every time. God, help us to understand that all of our strength and all of our help come from the Lord. Now, we ask your blessing be upon your people as we leave the doors of this church, God, and we return to our various different places. We pray for blessings upon that house that we will return to. We pray, God, if there's someone who has a procedure that they're going through this week, that they will know that their healer is Jesus. We pray, God, that no matter what situation, mental, mental stress or emotional stress that people may be under, let them know that God is a heart and a mind regulator. God, we just thank you for being a great God, that you love us so much that we can never, ever repay your love. But we thank you for who you are. Now, God, as we leave this place, we know we would never, ever leave your presence. Thank you, God, for all that you are and all that you do. Now unto him who's able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior glory and majesty dominion and power both now and forever
Thank mm-hmm. you.